this next Dear Diary episode, we have... geography class studying human sociology with regard in regards to geology. Um, she was extremely short. I was not attracted to her at first because of her I guess her hairstyle kind of threw me off and she seemed to be too much to herself. But she was extremely short. She was about um, American measurement or British measurement about five feet or a short girl. Uh, she told me after we had met and got together and she became interested in me, she told me that she was 25 and from getting to know her a little bit more as time passed I discovered that she wasn't not in fact 25, she was actually had just turned 20. And we had first met at the beginning of a summer class, summer session, and stayed friends throughout the winter. And she was determined that I would be her guy, um, which was alright by me, I didn't mind being with her and being her boyfriend. Um, she had two brothers, they were both artists, studying to make uh, uh, animation, I think it was for video games initially, I don't know if they did, eventually did film. Dion was studying psychology, um, and she put in so much effort with little sleep that she used to have these horrible headaches that would just go across the top part of her eyes and cause her no end of pain. Her father had given her a car to drive because uh, he thought she'd be safer with a car in a big city like Halifax. Her family owned that hotel on a number one highway off Fredericton in New Brunswick, which is near the Quebec border. She had, uh, I noticed that as time went by, her car was more and more smashed in, from being little dense to being having the whole side of the car smashed in. She told me that um, she had tried to make a corner once in a parking garage, and because the uh, the uh, beams are so close, she had wedged the car in against a beam and tried to get it out, and made the dent go in further and. But literally, she took, in one year's time, she took this brand new Hyundai and she made it look like something that she had just acquired out of a junkyard. Uh, Deanne and I first went on our first date. We actually went window shopping. It was my suggestion. And I wanted to see what her tastes were in clothes and what she liked in shoe style and whatever. And she introduced me for the first time to a differences in, in the women's clothing stores. I thought they were all the same. But there were clothing stores for old women, clothing stores for younger women. She thought it was odd that, uh, what's a guy, why would a guy be interested in what women's clothes are all about and what they look like and in uh, women's tastes in clothes. And she looked at me on the way out of the shopping center. She said, she said, I think you're gay, aren't you? And I said, no. And she said, yeah, you're gay. You're just covering up because you like window shopping. So we hung out together for a long time. We, our first date in the apartment, she had to bring a friend with her for the meal. She actually got drunk off the de-alcoholized wine that I had bought because Dion didn't like to drink wine. 
She called herself Dion, but um, I mean, her name was actually Dion in Korean, but uh, she didn't want anybody to uh, try and pronounce her Korean name, so she called herself Dion, which I thought was a mistake. You know, white people have trouble even with English names. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I always try to encourage Asians to keep their original name. It's so much cooler. I'm not that fond of names like Betty or or there's one male name, it's like Matt. Have you ever heard of that? If you come to Canada, there's like, for each classroom you have about ten Matts. I'm not kidding you. Matt, the name Matt is just freaking everywhere in this country. And I'm trying to think of back to 20-25 years ago, where did this come from? Which movie star had the name Matt? That all mothers had to name their sons Matt because they can't think of any other name. So, you know, I don't like, I don't like things being the same all the time. I think you should go be creative, try something different. Anyway, with regards to John, uh, the worst car accident she had was actually coming out of the, her family parents' hotel in uh, Fredericton and a car stopped to let her out into the intersection and gave her the go-ahead to go. But she took the car out, I believe she took the car out a little bit too far and uh, got rammed right in the side of the door. Her father paid for the repairs to that car and gave it to her to drive to uh, St. Mary's University in Halifax, where I met her, and she smashed it. And, she, and over the course of a year, she had that car looking exactly like it was all smashed up again. I would imagine her father had a fit when he saw that. <coughs> but um, one distinguishing feature, physical feature, about this girl was her her hips when she wore a pair of jeans, and she had this really great huge belt, really wide belt, and I'm telling you, baby girl had them hips, oh my lord, was she beautiful, she had the most luscious, curved hips, and I mean, they were like, perfectly proportioned, to this day, I could see those hips and that belt, so very clearly, as if it were yesterday, she was so freaking hot when she wore those jeans and had that belt on, Oh my god, baby girl looked good. Mmm. What a treat that was. It was while we were on the shopping center date that Dion looked at me and she said, you know, you should be wearing hip-hop clothes. And I thought, at my age, I should be wearing hip-hop? That's for children. You know, the, the style I, I picture uh, for little kids or or people in maybe their early 20s, but no, you wouldn't do that for a guy in his 30s. That would, you know, that just looks stupid. So immature, it just looks stupid on a guy. I mean, it's alright if you're like 20, 20, maybe 23, that's okay. But past that, you start looking like an idiot. So I turned her down and said, no friggin' way, and she said, yeah, you should. Already she was trying to, to take control, you know, change my clothing style. <clears throat> A lot of girls will like to change things in their guys very quickly, you know, just after they get together. But, uh, yeah, you should actually resist that, unless uh, you agree with it. If you don't agree, even if you disagree a little bit, you shouldn't change yourself for, for anybody. Because <clears throat> it could lead to conflict later on in your relationship. And I'm pretty strong when it comes to that sort of situation. I'm not going to change. If I feel uncomfortable about something or, or like something, I'm not changing it. I, would, I wouldn't do it. Got to be who I am. If she can't accept that, then, you know, there's nothing I can do for you. So anyway, oh yeah, our first date, um... She brought her friends. Of course, she got drunk off of de alcohol, de alcoholized wine. I don't know how she did that, but um, real fussy about the food. Like I, I cut up lettuce, and I'll just put it in the, put it on the rice and the fish. 
or the chicken, whichever, whatever I'm cutting. It usually took me three to four hours to cook a gourmet meal. And she saw the uh, lettuce that I had put on the plate, and it had you know, just tiny little pieces of it. It had little brown spots. And she picked up this piece of lettuce with this just this little smidge of brown on it. And she goes, she goes, what's this? And I said, this is your lettuce. And she said, it's it's damaged. It's rotten. It's damaged. It wasn't rotten. It was just a bit damaged, a little bit brown in one tiny spot. And she says, we don't call this lettuce. We call this garbage. She's referring to her parents' restaurant in the hotel. After the meal was over, I gave each of the girls a rose that I had put on a put in a vase. And we walked down the dorm to the dorm room where um, her friend, her Chinese friend, and and Dion were. She had a separate room for staying. And uh, the Chinese girl wanted my phone number and email address because I guess she liked. She started to like me too <clears throat> because of the way I treated them and respectful and all that. And um, so I, as she wanted to take pictures of us, she had her camera, Dion had her camera. And we, they started taking pictures of us together in turns. And so when my turn came up that I was standing by Dion, I reached around and held her in an embrace. And Dion went, aww. And it was so it had to be one of the nicest compliments I'd ever received from anyone. I still remember that to this second. She was so in tune with that, that gesture and that, that act of affection that, uh, oh, she really appreciated that. She used to tell me that uh, guys wouldn't ask her out. Guys wouldn't ask her to dance. Dion loved to dance. She used to go to the nightclubs every weekend. I couldn't go because I had a promise made that I would never go to the pubs, taverns, uh, nightclubs, whatever. I'd made this promise, and I'm obligated by by code, my personal code, that I, once a promise has been made, it can never be broken. And uh, Dion didn't like that too much. She thought I should break the promise and go with her to the dance. So she used to go to the dance with her friends or by herself, and there would well, there's one Korean guy there. She complained to me about that he danced too close to her. He was getting way too close, like body to body, and she'd have to push him back because she wasn't there for sex. She was there just to enjoy the dance. But anyway, eventually, um, Jeon was not doing so well at St. Mary's in psychology. She transferred herself to a school in Toronto, but she got notice to go, or not Toronto, Ottawa. She got a notice to go that, that week, so she couldn't contact me like she had planned on, on coming over to the apartment to visit. I was living on campus at the time. So she shoved a note under my door. It was the best she could do because the two of us were busy. and. Um, she hopped in her car, packed her bags, and left. And all I had as a goodbye was that note. But we stayed in contact for months. She was driving from Ottawa to Fredericton for the longest time until she got... I think it lasted two weeks every day during school time. She was living at her parents' place. And, um... driving back and forth. I don't know how the hell she did it. But uh, eventually she gave up on the idea and found a student's room in Ottawa and just stayed there and went home on the weekends. But to do that every day, oh my god. I mean, if you look at a map between Ottawa and Fredericton, New Brunswick, and you look at Ottawa, Ontario, and you see how far and long that distance is, I think she said she drove for something like six hours and there wasn't four or five hours to get there and four or five hours to get home again after school. But anyway, uh, eventually uh, we uh, only kept in contact at Christmas time. Uh, she got her psychology um, masters. I was quite proud of her. And uh, one Christmas she just stopped writing. I mean, uh, 
she just ceased contact altogether, I was put on a block list. Which means that she found a boyfriend and she cut me off totally just for that year. And I guess once um, he got tired of her, her body and wanted to move on to something else, he let her go and she contacted me again. Or she allowed me to contact her the next uh, Christmas time. And we stay in contact to this day at Christmas time. Anyway, after we had gotten together in class, and I had another roommate at the time, I was helping her with her, with her assignments. She wanted me to go to the coffee shop with her and I, I turned her down because I said, I got to study with this girl here, who was my roommate at the time. And uh, to this day I regret that. I should have went, you know, just a half hour. But, you know, you can't make a promise to one girl and then break it. And I did say I would help her study. I mean, I could have went for 30 minutes and come back again because we were there for at least six hours <clears throat> at that computer terminal trying to get that assignment done. I could have left for 30 minutes. I should have done it, but, but you know, I've, if I feel felt obligated to this other girl, you know, it was one of those promises that, yeah, I promised to help her get this assignment done. I didn't promise I would stay with her for the entire time. There was like a loophole I could work with. But, but any time I could have spent with Dion, I loved being with that girl every freaking second. Um, Dion went and told one of her friends about me just after we met that how much she liked me and she was really into this guy. And her friend saw me in the computer lab around campus with that old with this old winter coat that I had. That I eventually put a new cover on, which made it even warmer than it used to be. But, uh, you know, I can't wear it now because it's for like 40, minus 40, minus 50 degrees after I had it relined. But it was, it was battered and had a few rips and her girlfriend said to her, uh, why would you want him? He looks so scruffy and dirty. And yeah, it was kind of a bad coat, was pretty beat up before I had it relined. But Dion liked me to no end. And Oh, baby girl was so beautiful and I really enjoyed being with her. To this day, losing Dion was and is one of my greatest regrets. God, how I miss her. I should have put more effort into the relationship. I should have stayed with you. I just should have made the effort. Man, you're a beautiful person. You're magnificent.